Hey y'all, it's Jason from GameRave.com, otherwise known as Danger Boy, and this is Game Rave TV. We did it! Welcome to the 10th episode, our first double digits, and it's going to be a doozy. Um, to celebrate our milestone, I guess, um, I wanted to go back and redo uh, our NBA 2-Ball uh, webpage, just because it's been outdated and so forth. Um, for those that have never been to the website, NBA 2-Ball, which is right here, and here, um, is a very rare demo for the PlayStation um, that was given out at the 1998 NBA All-Star Game. And NBA 2-Ball, in and of itself, the real sport, is basically a mini-game you play on half court. And there's two basketball players, and there are specific spots uh, painted on the floor. And basically, the uh, players have to alternate shots, even if you miss, the other person has to pick it up and take their shot. Uh, from those specific points on the floor. And you had basically had to get the uh, most points in 60 seconds um, with, uh, with it shooting at least at three of those spots. Um, it was fairly big in 1998. In fact, I believe uh, NBA Hoops even had a mode uh, with it in there. And uh, it was in interim murals. Um, they did the uh, NBA two ball games um, at the traveling shows and stuff. It was big enough that uh, they even have like a t-shirt and watch and other memorabilia from it. Um, with the demo, uh, what's fairly peculiar is that all the copies known so far have come from uh, Canada, I guess. And what makes it interesting is that so far, what started off as a rare one of a kind became a two of a kind, and suddenly became variant kind, and now we're slowly moving up, ironically, almost towards double digits of known copies. Um, the story of NBA 2-Ball, as far as Game Rave is concerned, is a fairly interesting one. I figured I'd you know, share the story with you. Uh, long ago, uh, one of our friends in Canada, hey Sphinx, uh, found the his copy of the game, and it was buried in a box of demos and so forth. And long story short, my friend Steve, love him to death, uh, basically bought it and gave it to me as a uh, best man gift. Now, the catch with this demo, uh, first of all, it was the first known one ever to be found. I had nothing to do with it, go figure. And uh, the problem was the disc was cracked. It was a good, in fact, actually, this is the broken one right here. I'll show you guys. Um, I don't know if the camera's gonna be able to see this or not, but this was the original disc. And as you can see, there's a wedge, big old crack in there. And I actually gotta tape it to keep it together. Um, Originally, it was just one crack, and the plan was is to throw it in the PlayStation and see if I could at least get it to boot. And if we get it to boot, just like you know, take a couple photographs. Okay, cool, yay. Well, we couldn't do that, so the we tried it. Even on a debugger, it wouldn't work. So what we had planned, what I had planned to do was is to throw it in a PC uh, tray and on a one-speed setting, see if I could somehow read the information off the disk copy files over to a CDR and then one of my debuggers um, try and play the CDR or at least you know see what I could do even if it required a game shark and so forth. And I stuck that cracked disc into my PC and without realizing I forgot to set the settings to one speed, my 32 speed CD-ROM spun in a two ball and I heard a chunk of plastic start bouncing around the computer. Much to say there was a lot of drinking that night. Uh, with the now obviously damaged disc, um, we actually went back uh, to the PC after I fit, fished out the loose piece, and we actually were able to uh, get some of the files off. And I don't remember if it was before or after talking to Paul Bleguet, um that we realized and found out it was from NBA Jam Extreme. NBA Jam Extreme was the 3D NBA Jam for the PlayStation, the Saturn, and essentially what Paul and his uh, programming partner had done to make NBA 2-Ball was to rewrite a small little engine and place it with the assets from NBA Jam Extreme. So all you really had was a demo basically piggybacking on top of another game. Um, after we had posted all the info um, about the game to our website and made the YouTube, the old YouTube videos and so forth, um, word started getting around, yada yada, and a uh, person who shall re remain nameless uh, had contacted me and said he had a factory sealed copy, uh, which was this other one I showed you earlier. And 
he asked me if I was still looking for it. And I said, yeah, you know, I was offering, you know, $300 for it. Excuse me. And uh, after emailing back and forth, he ended up basically telling me that, oh, he decided to put it for auction on eBay. And when I went to click the eBay auction, what I saw was is he had listed it for $30,000, buy it now for best offer. The shit part was that without telling me or asking me, he went to GameRave and ripped all of my text off of the website and pasted it into his auction. So basically, he came to me, told me about an item he had that I needed, then took all of my content and tried using it to sell it for an exorbitant amount to someone else. Much to say, I was pissed. pissed. But I did the rational thing. I placed a bid on eBay of buy it now offer a uh, best offer for the three hundred dollars that way it was actually on paper and i could then go to uh you know ebay if need be and try to have the auction taken down long story short his wife convinced him to just take the three hundred dollars and run with it so that's how we got that copy um after all that was said and done uh Another person had apparently found the Game Rave article and he had another copy and he decided to uh, promote it and it went nuts and other sites featured it and so forth. And his YouTube video with him playing, I got more views than my reveal did, which was kind of depressing. But that's beside the point. Not bitter. Not bitter. Um, and, but what was shocking was that when I saw the photos in his, in his auction when he sold it off, was that it was a trade demo. And a trade demo, for those that don't know, is a basically plain white cardboard sleeve uh, that a demo disc would come in that was usually given to journalists or managers at a game store, etc. Which meant NBA 2-Ball now had a variant. <laughs> God, I hate my life. Um, what made it even weirder is that when I went back to Paul Legay, the programmer, uh, it actually turned out that his copy was a trade demo the entire time. So now what started off as one cracked disc of a, like one of a kind, and now after this is like, we're going on like two or three years now since I posted the page, um, we now have known at least two uh, trade demos with a possible third and at least six or seven uh, black sleeve demos. What's interesting is that um, I actually have uh, Sony's internal books, uh, both the graphic design, uh, programming, uh, what would you call it, um, printing and so forth. And referencing that publishing book, uh, there was a minimum order of a thousand discs. And that means that there's at least 993 NBA 2 balls still out there floating around probably, you know, in someone's box in a garage or, you know, sitting in a Tupperware container somewhere. So obviously NBA 2-Ball isn't as rare as it once was. It's pretty freaking obscure. But what's nice is, is that now that we have other known copies floating around, we can move on to even more rare uh, items. And one of those, um, actually uh, most of those, the ones that I need for a complete set are actually trade demos or a couple retail demos. And there are now demos even harder to find than NBA 2-Ball. And unfortunately by saying that, I've now jinxed myself and trying to find a cheap copy of those. Um, but if you do have them, let me know. Spread this video around. Um, I'll update the link uh, down below that shows what you know ones I'm looking for besides the white trade demo of NBA 2-Ball. And that $300 offer is still out there if you have the white one. I'll pay it. Why not? I'm, I'm an idiot like that. I don't need to eat for a month. Um, but yeah, uh, so that brings us back to full circle. Uh, we, you know, used our new high def capture card stuff to uh, redo the video, redo the screenshots. Um, I've completely updated the information on the uh, web page, so it's all current. Uh, I've now got the variant listing in there. And as a game itself, back to the you know original gameplay uh, discussion, it wasn't too bad. It, you know, it's the problem is it's only two players. There's no one player mode. There's no AI program to do it. So unless you have a friend that wants to play a 60 second basketball game, you'll play it a couple times, you know, by yourself and put it on the shelf. Uh, in fact, when you watch the video, that's literally me playing with myself. That sounded better in my head. Um, 
which is why the one character is always standing still while the orange running around trying to grab the ball. Um, I don't know if it shows up in the video or not, but um, I know in one of the screenshots it did. Uh, what's interesting is that they didn't fully lock out all of NBA Jam's little features in the game, so if you actually miss a shot, the ball actually still becomes a brick, which is pretty funny, uh, all things considered. Um, but yeah, that's about it. Um, like I said, I am still looking for the white trade demo version. Uh, just check out the uh, new NBA 2 Ball page at the website. Uh, if you guys have any questions, concerns, what have you, email me, post down below, Twitter, it's all good. We'll see you guys later. Have a good one. Don't forget to subscribe. Love you. Bye.